Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time. I'm Siddharth Vardarajan and my guest today is Mr. Hu Shichin, editor-in-chief of one of the most important uh, Chinese newspapers, Global Times, uh, perhaps the third largest circulating daily in China. Uh, more than 20 odd years it's been publishing. Um, Mr. Hu himself, you've, uh, you, you, yourself, you've been editor uh, for uh, 10 years now. And uh, the paper, of course, is known quite well outside of China because of uh, uh, the rather sharp way in which you express uh, some of your views. Uh, I'd like to start by asking you the most topical question, uh, which has to do with the recent visit to India by uh, President Barack Obama. Uh, one of the reactions from the Chinese side, uh, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, in response to uh, a joint statement by India and the U.S. about the South China Sea was that uh, this is a problem that the regional, uh, uh, th those countries' parties to the dispute uh, are capable of solving themselves and there is no reason for uh, outside countries to get involved. Why is China so touchy about India and the United States uh, talking about the South China Sea issue? 中国外交部发表这个声明，我觉得是很正常的。确实，南海是由周边国家。The the the, the, issue, the issuing of statement by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China is very normal. is a very general thing. The thing that the issue that China that America and India discuss the issue of South China Sea, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China and is issuing a statement on that is a very normal thing. Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China believes that the issue of South China Sea has to be resolved only by the countries which are around it and uh, does not need any intervention from any other country or outside power. So the issuing of statement of Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China is very normal with a very mundane kind of thing. Okay. It's not a sensitive, I think. Uh, 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 our reaction is normal. You talked about uh, uh, this issue and uh, we react. This reaction is very normal. It's not a sensitive, I think. What is your view of the way in which India-U.S. relations are developing uh, in the light of President Obama's visit to New Delhi? Uh, do you think, uh, as a Chinese analyst, uh, that the India-U.S. partnership will be a factor for stability and peace in Asia? Or does the Chinese side have some uh, concerns about this partnership? Uh, we do not think that there is anything uh, unnatural or a bad omen kind of thing that India and China are uh, India and US are developing relationships. India is a very big country and it's very normal for India to, to develop relations with America. There are many countries in Asia which have very good relations with Asia. We ourselves in China have very good relations with America. And we, ha we, are, we have always been, uh, we have been now a very big economy and we are also developing. So this development of relationship between India and US is very normal and we do not think that it has any stability threat, at least presently, to the Asian environment. For the past two days I have been constantly asked the same question. I don't know why this is a very sensitive question, a sensitive thing over here that Obama and, Amer and India are developing relationships. I think it is very normal for countries in all over Asia to develop relationships, relationship with America. India, Pakistan, all of them can, can, ha can develop re good relationships with America. Uh, uh, Mr. Hu, when uh, President uh, Xi Jinping came to India, uh, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi he went out of his way to uh, welcome uh, President Xi, uh, took him to his hometown of Ahmedabad and really tried to uh, do everything possible to make the visit a success. However, one of the problems that came up was the uh, sudden presence of uh, Chinese soldiers uh, on territory that India says is its territory. Now, I understand that there is... Um, uh, some confusion about where the line is. So soldiers, uh, these incidents can happen. But there were a lot of questions in India about the timing of the incident, that of all the time uh, that this incident could have happened, for it to happen when President Xi was in India, 
it 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 uh, upset a lot of people here. Uh, what, to your mind, explains the timing of that incident? Was it just a coincidence, or are there sections of the Chinese leadership, perhaps in the Chinese military, who do not want India and China to develop good relations? I think the Indo-Weity part of this thing is too big. The Indian media has always been exaggerating any incursions by the Chinese soldiers. They always extrapolate and exaggerate it in their reports. As far as the Chinese media is concerned, when the Chi uh, there were no reports at all of that incursion in the Chinese media. So the Indian media, it seems, that always exa exaggerates and extrapolates the reports of any incursions. Uh, otherwise, China and India have very peaceful relationships. And when Mr. As you as you saw that Mr. Uh, President Xi Jinping visited India, and very cordial welcome was extended to him, and everything was very peaceful. And these are all ex exaggerations. And if any small issues occur on the border areas, on the border issue, then we have the ability and the mechanism to solve it. The problem lies in the understanding of the area because there is confusion on the area. The rest, we have very good relation, and the border area is very peaceful. It's one of the very most peaceful areas. Uh, so I understand uh, why these incidents might occur. There is confusion about the line. And I agree with you that uh, the media in this country tends to exaggerate. Uh, however, uh, there is still a question about the timing. Why uh, did this happen during the visit? Was it, was it uh, just a coincidence? Uh, you know, uh, uh, India media always finds some incidents uh, on the border. Uh, this time, uh, uh, every day on the border, maybe some uh, little uh, incidents, uh, because we uh, understand this builder, uh, uh, its border differently, uh, differently. So, if you want to find incidents, you can find it every day. When Xi Jinping here, some India media make this noise. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, today is incident. Why is this incident happened today? Uh, this time, two time, is India media make it, not the border make it itself. You understand me? All right. Well, I think this time uh, it was the government of India that was that saw this as a little bit out of the ordinary. But we we'll leave it at that. I want to turn to uh, your role as a journalist and as an editor, and the, the paper that you edit, the Global Times. Uh, it's quite common to to hear the foreign media or foreign diplomats refer to Global Times as uh, a ultra nationalist uh, newspaper. Is that is that a correct description of the Global Times? Is is that uh, a description that you like, that the Global Times is, is nationalistic or even ultra-nationalistic. You know, uh, no editor yeah. likes the term that we are being called as a nationalistic newspaper. I also don't like the term, no editor of the of newspaper would like this term of being called as a nationalistic newspaper. But there are issues when countries have to protect their own interests. I, I, I believe that in China it is seen that Indian newspapers are even more nationalistic than Chinese newspapers. Indian, newspa Indian media reports about the border incursions, about the problems on the border more frequently than the Chinese media does. And we merely in the Chinese media report again what has been reported by the Indian media. So we, see, we feel that the, the Indian media is more nationalistic than us. Well, I suppose one of the reasons the, Ch the Indian media reports these border incidents more frequently than the Chinese is because, to my understanding, the bulk of these incursions happen when the Chinese troops come onto the Indian side. I'm sure if the Indian troops were, in were in uh, committing incursions on the Chinese side, uh, this would be something the Chinese media would report. Uh, uh, the, Chinese, uh, the Chinese side also does not intrude into the region. It is a disputed territory and uh, both the sides have different understanding of the area. Both patrol the area. The Chinese side patrols the area as well as the Indian side patrol the area. 
but so India, but the Indian media extrapolates it and prints it, and the Chinese media has an understanding of the confusion and ab abstains from reporting it. You understand me? Yes. Uh, this uh, line, but understand understanding different. We uh, patrolled, uh, and you patrolled, but they don't meet each other, and uh, we can every day said you. Uh, uh, on our territory. You can every day set Chinese troops on your territory, but this is rule of game. Right. This is peaceful, right. peaceful, right. but you said, oh, Chinese uh, 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 on our territory, again, again, you make noise, but uh, uh, in fact, there is peace. Well, it's true that there hasn't been a single shot fired on the uh, line, of con line of actual control ever since uh, the two sides reached an agreement in the 80s. So you're right, it is absolutely peaceful and it, it will hopefully remain that way. What happens when the uh, interests of the people, your readers, uh, clashes with the interests of the government or the Communist Party? Uh, there must be examples uh, in your experience when this happens. So then who prevails? Is it the party that prevails or the readers and the people? Uh, I understand. Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, foreign policy. Um, people want government more tough, more tough. And we, uh, uh, our uh, editorial uh, said uh, government should be tough. But government, uh, they think, uh, not should be so tough. Uh, uh, that way is uh, difference. You're making an interesting point. Are you saying that Chinese public opinion is uh, more nationalist or wants, is more tough than the Chinese government on many issues of foreign policy? Uh, in every country uh, this way, uh, media always uh, is tough than uh, government. <laughs> As in India, in Japan, in Japan, you always say, oh, uh, how how we we do something to China and do something from that. but the government is more balanced. Right. In, in the Chinese media, we see some examples. Uh, for example, the Southern Metro Metropolis Daily, which uh, uh, engages in fairly critical reporting of local government and the central government, and sometimes their journalists or other papers they pay the price for this. Uh, other examples where Global Times has. Uh, got into trouble with the Chinese government over something that you've written? Uh, Chinese uh, newspaper often criticize uh, government. For example, uh, uh, Globe Times, uh, we often criticize government on foreign policy. And uh, other uh, local newspapers, uh, they uh, criticize uh, government uh, on local affairs. Such uh, newspapers, not many. Mind, but uh, you know, criticizing in Chinese media is every day, and sometimes very sharp, very sharp. And the government don't know how to uh, handle this. Do you think what uh, the Southern Metropolis Daily does is is good journalism in China? Do you think that there should be more examples of that? Uh, since Nan Fang Chomo is my they are my colleagues, the South Southern Weekend is my colleague, so I will not make a comment on them. But I believe that the Chinese media have to find its own way. They have all the media houses have to go their own way. They cannot copy the media houses of China or Japan or any other country. They have to go their own way. Um, in the in the time that we have left, I want to uh, turn our attention to the coverage of India. Uh, in uh, the Chinese media. And what many of us have noticed uh, is that in the Global Times and also in other newspapers uh, in China, uh, coverage of India tends to be of two kinds. Uh, stories that focus on uh, defense related issues, particularly uh, US India or India Japan uh, defense cooperation, where that is seen in a very negative way. And the second kind of stories are stories about poverty, disaster, uh, tragedy in India. Uh, why uh, is coverage limited to these two areas? Uh, is this what the readers want or is this a conscious decision that uh, Chinese editors take? Uh, 
uh, Huan Jiushibao, you have a lot of news about this. We also have reports on the diversity of India in our newspaper, Global Times, does good justice with all the kind of various reporting. We do reporting on the diversity of India, the economic development of India, the natural beauty of India. But I, but I do agree that Chinese media uh, uh, reports it very quickly whenever a disaster or a tragedy happens in India. But I think that's the same with the Indian media also. Indian media also immediately reports about any tragedy or disaster happening in, in China. I think it's also a kind of global trend. Well, if you look at Indian coverage of, of China uh, in the last 10 years, uh, you have more Indian correspondents now. There's greater uh, interest in what's happening in China. And the, co the coverage that we see is not just confined to uh, the uh, so-called China threat uh, kind of stories or uh, disasters. You have a lot of interest in the Chinese economy, uh, Chinese society, uh, and there is genuine reader interest in uh, all of these developments in China. Uh, but somehow the perception here is that the Chinese media uh, tends to focus more on the negative side of what's happening in India. I really thank you for uh, expanding your horizon. I, I really have, uh, I read, I'm really glad to hear that Indian media is expanding its horizon to cover all kinds of issues about China, as you said. Uh, the Indian media, I believe, uh, uh, I believe that uh, the Indian economy is creating a miracle. And I also think that the Indian society is, uh, in the Indian culture is wonderful and we are really appreciative of the Indian culture and as well as the miracle which the Indian economy is creating. And we think that the, 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 uh, the po poverty and uh, being poor cannot fully describe the Indian society and India. Mr. Hu, in, there was an article you wrote uh, shortly after the, uh, the brutal rape of a young woman in Delhi in December uh, 2012, where you argued that um, th these kinds of incidents were in some way the product of democracy. And that article triggered a huge debate uh, in uh, the Chinese social media. Uh, I was editor of, uh, of, of an Indian newspaper at the time, The Hindu, and uh, our correspondent uh, wrote a story about this debate. Uh, do you still uh, believe do you do you still uh, stick to that view that uh, incidents of crime like uh, 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 rape that happen in India are the product of democracy, or do you think uh, democracy will help to uh, resolve these kinds of uh, issues? We cannot have reported like this. We do not have this kind of I any perspective of this kind. It must have been some other person's reporting or it must have been some misunderstanding. I can assure you that this is a false report and, uh, this, uh, and I can assure you that this cannot have happened with our newspaper and our newspaper could not have publicized this kind of a view. Okay. Um, in your view, uh, I know there's a debate going on right now in China about uh, Western values. Uh, there's a controversy about the extent to which so-called Western values should be taught in Chinese schools and Chinese universities. Is it your view that values like uh, respect for human rights and democracy uh, are Western values or are these values that are shared by all peoples and all civilizations around the world? Uh, we are only against the Western political value system. We do not think that it is the Western political value system is the, is the uh, uh, value system. We, all, we completely stand for human rights and democracy. And we think that they are global and universal values. They are not just Western values. We have now, uh, China has uh, issued uh, what does mean uh, socialist uh, value, what does mean. And uh, democracy and human rights on it, in it. In it. Uh, they uh, have uh, 24 uh, aerograph, uh, 24 uh, Chinese word, Chinese word. And uh, uh, democracy, and uh, 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 and the human rights is in it. But do you see, uh, as an analyst and as a as an editor, uh, China slowly evolving towards a more open 
political system where there would be not just the Communist Party, but uh, uh, other parties that, uh, and not just the parties that are allied to the Communist Party today, but other parties uh, where Chinese citizens would have the right to freely express uh, all kinds of political views as in India. Do you see China evolving in that direction uh, over the next 10 or 20 years? In the future also, the Communist Party, uh, the Communist Party of China is the sole party of China which, is, which will remain in power also in the future. This has been guaranteed by the constitution of China. China also has eight other political parties, but their relationship with the, with, the, with the Communist Party of China is not one of competing or fighting with each other. They, they are cooperating with the Communist Party of China. So in the future also, I do not think a, a, a major shift coming up. Communist Party of China has been destined by the constitution of China to be the, uh, the party in power. We oppose the value system that, pro, uh, that stands for changing of the political party every time. We do not uh, uh, completely approve of a system which, sta which, which has a need for a political party to constantly change in a country. Why we oppose this kind of political view of change of political parties is, the, is because the Ch Communist Party of China, this kind of political system suits our country. It is because of the Communist Party of China that we have been, ha we have been able to achieve this kind of prosperity and this kind of economic development. The Communist Party of China has played a big role in, uh, in building the country and bringing the country from a very backward country to the present situation. And we oppose the kind of views propagated by the Western countries. The Western countries think that their political system is the only right system and everybody should learn from their system. We oppose this kind of views. I'd like to, I'd like to bring, come back to uh, something I started this interview with, which was on the foreign policy uh, issue. And again, draw on your, uh, on your insight as a, as, a, as, a, as a leading Chinese editor. Uh, one of the reasons the world today is somewhat concerned about, uh, about China is because we don't know uh, what exactly uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, policies are. Uh, in the past, the Chinese would speak about uh, a peaceful rise of China. Uh, President Hu Jintao had the concept of a harmonious, uh, harmonious world. Uh, with under uh, President Xi Jinping, there seems to be greater Chinese assertiveness, which is reflected in uh, sharpening of territorial disputes with many neighbors, uh, including with India, but also Japan, Vietnam, Philippines. Uh, in your view, uh, what is the uh, foreign policy uh, theory or, 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 or philosophy of uh, 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 President uh, Xi Jinping today? Our, uh, our, world, our foreign policy towards the whole world is very stable. We seek a very stable world around us. We do not seek to have any conflict with any country around us. All these, con all these ideas about our being more assertive and more, do more dominating in the neighborhood and in the world has been, made by the web, had been, has been made up by the Western media. Every move and every small step that we, that, that we make is being closely watched by America and other countries. The, the sheer reason is that we are so big now. They watch every step and every move we, we make and there's a big news about that in the Western media. I believe that there is no big change in our perspective on the Western policy front. If you compare our rise with the Japanese rise, you can find that uh, there are very, very a uh, lot of differences between the two. When Japan was rising, they had they had a lot of conflict with the rest of the world, and they were dominating and being very assertive in the whole world. That is what is called uh, rising and ha being assertive. What Japan did, we on the contrary are being very peaceful and very cordial with all the countries around us. We want to share all the benefits and all the profits. So we are actually having a peaceful rise. Uh, you described uh, Global Times as uh, a paper which reflects Chinese public opinion uh, and is uh, tough, stands for, uh, is more tough than the Chinese government. What in your view would be a fair settlement of the boundary dispute with India? Uh, the border issue between China and India is very complex. And it is very difficult to resolve that. I agree with that. But that should not inter uh, that should not hinder our other other cooperations and other understandings to from developing. I, on a personal front, 
support the government's view on the border issue. I completely support, I'm backing the Chinese government on the border front. But the biggest issue I see presently is uh, the Indian media raking up the smallest of controversies happening on the border. I think that should be, a set, uh, that should be looked after and we can keep the border issue aside and we can go into further development of our relationships in other fields. When your media cried up our border and said some very tough words, we have to react on it. And that makes feelings that uh, is, there is a tension between two countries. But uh, this tension is not real. Uh, Mr. Hu Shichin, it's not very uh, common for uh, Indian television viewers to hear firsthand the views of a leading Chinese editor like yourself. Thank you very much for joining us on Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you.